this disabled gaming reviews let's play it's best enjoyed in front of a computer monitor and or tablet with the speakers on and to any epileptics out there please watch this in a well-lit environment to reduce the risk of any potential seizures this DJR place party is also unofficially sponsored by boom and mini boom in air so boom and mini boom are a geek boutique where if you're looking for things like dragon ball mugs alien figurines etc etc definitely check them out did I also mention that they're an official Warhammer retailer? So if you're looking for extra fire team squads to add to your Tau army, definitely check them out. They are located opposite Airbus Station. Look out for the Deadpool statue. Links to Boom and Mini Boom's Facebook page is in the video's description below. Now, with all that aside, please enjoy the video. Sports and Commander 1992 video of Disabled Game Reviews here. It's a quiet Tuesday night, so I'm thinking might as well continue on with this Let's Play. So welcome to part four. So last time we we tried down Jack Lupino's right hand man, Venegan Meeting. But during after a short interrogation, uh, we now know exactly where Jack Lupino is hiding. It's in its little um more satanic nightclub Ragnarok. So we are now going in to the belly of the beast that is Jack Lapino's nightclub. So again, no miles with me because he still is away in America, probably like for like three weeks. So once again, I'm on my own. So okay, I've got the timer ready and Yep, and I've got the right audio, video source. Might as well, I'm thinking, might as well um, take advantage of this loading screen just to check. Because, you know, the timer doesn't start when the level's loaded. Okay, right, so let's do this, 45 minutes. Let's go.
so I've got 41 minutes on the clock. <laughs> this demonstrates the value of saving your game. Okay, there, here we go. The Empire of Evil, Chapter 9. Oh, let's pause the timer. Dope. The backstage area led to Lupino's inner sanctum. The hot air inside was like an invisible wall, thick with incense and something else. A sickly sweet smell that made you gag. This was the rotten core of the Big Apple. Lupino lurked somewhere ahead, like a spider at the center of his web, waiting. The vapors in the air started to make my head swim. Torn pieces of a letter lay scattered on the sofa. Punchinello had threatened Lupino in writing. The note had been torn to pieces, bloody fingerprints all over them. Don't want you to think that one of my boys is not playing with a full deck. Shape up, Jack. We are running a business here. I'd hate to send the trio to strong arm you. The trio were the Don's notorious henchmen. It was obvious that Lupino hadn't been intimidated by the threat. I had known there'd have to be a catch in it somewhere, and this one was the Empire State Building of catches. Lupino was pumped up and dying to go 15 rounds with a mutant alligator. And then he started this spooky monkey talk, straight from a bad dream. Mine. 
I have tasted the flesh of fallen angels. I've tasted the devil's green blood. It runs in my veins. I've seen beyond a world of skin. The architecture of blood and bow and arrow. Death is coming! She is coming. And hell follows with her. This is the twilight winter. I am ready to be her son. <laughs> her time is now. And all who stand in her way must die. <laughs> <laughs> You'll die! You'll <laughs> die! Now! Oh! Die! Oh! Oh! You'll die! You'll die! Now! All die! Ha ha ha!
<laughs> You'll die! You'll <laughs> die! Now! Oh! finally went down. I wanted to make real sure he'd stay that way. V was a bad monster. Turned them into friggin' zombie demons from outer space. I think he's dead already. Huh? And that's when it happened. But dead or not, you've got the wrong guy. In stepped this knockout femme fatale holding a gun to my face. I returned the favor. So we're now going into part two, A Cold Day in Hell, with 31 minutes and 15 seconds on the clock. Lisa Punchinello. Lisa Punchinello was the Don's wife. Mona Sachs. Lisa's evil twin. Your safety's off, evil twin. You might hurt someone with that gun of yours. Lisa's the damsel in distress. I'm the professional. I'd blow you away without batting an eye. Sure, and you can check out my credentials splattered all over this joint. Jack couldn't have framed you. Not the state he was in. We're after the same slime bag. Angelo Punchinello's the one who murdered your friend and framed you with it. You know this for a fact. I've got my sources. I don't have a clue these days. I just shoot them as they come. Who put a contract on the Archfiend? This one's mine. I hate the guts of that sadistic wife beater. Why not pool our bullets for this one? I thought you'd never ask. My finger was starting to twitch. How do you like your whiskey? I'm easy, as long as you don't try to slip me a Mickey. You're a real angel, Max. It was good stuff. Tasted sweet as honey going down. Nothing personal. Can't risk you going berserk and getting Lisa killed. <laughs> The nightmare was always the same. Violent shapes moving in darkness, old and ugly. The killer's mad laughter was a riddle filled with wicked innuendo. Somewhere, the baby was crying.
Should have known it when we found you snoring next to Lapino's corpse. A comedian, huh? The pictures were filled with good old times. Michelle looked at me from the photo. The Payne family, happiness captured in a Polaroid moment. I had thought it would last forever, till death do us part. I didn't want to think about it. As long as I didn't, it could never happen. But I had broken my own rule. The thought had already slipped in. Fear was rusty needles poking at my brain. Cold and scaly, it slithered down my chest. Alex and I had a few moments of glory between us. Alex and I had a few moments of glory between us. Crime fighting comrades. The best in NYPD DEA collaborative team. Good hearted macho bullshit like that. I would have given anything to have him here as my backup. No such luck. No luck at all. The Payne family. Happiness captured in a Polaroid moment. I had thought it would last. Tricky. 
I really love to watch cartoons. Captain Baseball Bat Boy is my favorite. I really love to watch cartoons. Captain Baseball Bat Boy is my favorite. I really love to watch cartoons. Captain Baseball Bat Boy is my favorite. I really love to watch cartoons. Captain Baseball Bat Boy is my favorite. You can slice them, dice them, shoot them full of holes, blow them to bits, vaporize them, disintegrate them. No matter what you do, they'll still be back good as new. Michelle's diary lay on the table. Michelle was working part-time in the district attorney's office. Her diary was open on today's entry. Her handwriting all pretty curves. An army dossier found its way to my desk yesterday. Valhalla? Isn't that a Norse myth? Something about Vikings? I tried to tell Max about it, but he was busy. That cute frown on his brow. Guess it's nothing, just a mix-up at the courier service. From now on, I would always find time for her. It was a hollow promise. Too little, too late. in the real world. Oh, that's all its falls up. 19 minutes, 18 seconds on the clock. Oh, thank goodness that's that bit, that's that bit over. I woke up in a bad dream. My head felt two sizes too small for my brain. Max Payne. I envy your name. And the killer was smiling. Pleased to meet you. I'm Frankie to Bat Niagara. Niagara, as in you cry a lot? He had a baseball bat and I was tied to a chair. Pissing him off was the smart thing to do. Nothing wrong with a little laugh now and then. Take me, for example. I love to watch cartoons. Cartoon violence is a fascinating thing. Let's take a break. I need to take a leak and maybe grab a cold one at the bar. Don't worry. I'll be back to finish this off. And then, it's checkout time. You 
play. You pay, you bastard. He swaggered out, and the door clanged shut behind him, locks clicking into place. Everyone makes mistakes. Mine hadn't been to crack jokes about the goon with the bat. He'd have cracked my skull regardless. It hadn't even been to trust a girl with a gun. I had blindly gone after the first bad guy on my hit list when I should have been aiming further up the ladder, at the head of the Punchinello family. I couldn't bring myself to be pissed at Mona. Guess I had a soft spot for a pretty face. But when somebody decides to play baseball with your head, you tend to get sore. They had dragged me back to the basement of Lupino's hotel. I was beaten, bruised, and blue. I felt like the chair I had broken to get free. All I had was Niagara's bat, sticky with my own blood. Without a gun, I'd be no match for Frankie's men. I'd have to play hide and seek with them. We'll take care of it. Yeah, no, I know. So I wouldn't mind having a go at him. Hey, yeah. It's hey, the... oh. 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 Without a gun, I'd be no match for Frankie's men. I'd have to play hide and seek with them. We'll take care of it. Yeah, no, I know. I just I wouldn't mind having a Damn. There he is! Hold it! Hold it!
things were fast going from bad to worse. The men in blue had come and gone. They had decorated the place with chalk outlines and tied it together with yellow tape. The cops who had stayed behind were dead. Frankie, his boys, and I had the place all for ourselves. Just forget about it. <laughs> just forget about it. Hey, just forget about it. That crazy. The punchinello didn't like me much. The fact remains that all the victims so far identified in the Ragnarok shooting have been known criminals, many of whom had large doses of V in their blood. Reliable sources say that Max Payne was also among those killed, although no body has been recovered at this time. Reliable sources. That meant somebody thought the Mafia had me and didn't want the cops snooping around anymore. The body would be delivered to them barely recognizable. Case closed. Don Punchinello had the power to be that reliable source, which was no news. But his news was old news. Framing me hadn't been enough. Don Punchinello had put a hit on me. He wanted me dead, and it had been important enough for him to give written instructions to Frankie about it. Max Payne should die like a dog for the trouble he's caused. Frankie? I know I can trust you to give this matter the dedication it needs. Hotel bar was fast developing quite a history. True to his words, Frankie was there, having a beer. Jesus Christ, how the hell did you get loose? Got bored waiting. Thought, what the hell, we could just as well finish this here. Fine by me. This works out just as well. Things were fast going from bad to worse. Just forget about it. <laughs> just forget about it. Hey, just forget about it. That crazy witch, you should have heard her. She was a real scream when the boys caught her trying to cap the Don. Oh, that's freaking bad. To the trio? That's even worse than what Frankie's doing to that poor bastard downstairs. She's gonna take a long time to die. The mobster muscle on the phone was talking about Mona. Punchinello's trio were nothing but bad news. More 
evidence that Nello didn't like me much. You've been a lovely audience. Had enough? I don't play with girls anyway. I'm fair! I spotted the tail as soon as I left the hotel. A big black Mercedes. I'd seen the car before. That time it had heralded impressive explosions. Vladimir was back. Bang! You're dead, Max Payne. I might have laughed if I remembered how. What's this supposed to be? Cops and robbers? Look, you want something with me? Get in line. Peace, man. Relax. You know you are a real news item. Armed and dangerous. I am going to make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. It's a bum rap. I've been framed. Well, that's a moot point. Whatever you did or did not do, I'm sure you had good reason for doing it. Want to hear me out? I'm listening. So here we go with part two, a cold day in hell. Pancinello messing with V is bad for business all around. But that's not all. There is this guy, Boris Time, used to pull jobs for me. He's the captain of the cargo ship Charon. Now the bastard Turncourt has gone over to the other side, Poncinellos. The ship's loaded with high-res hardware, guns, my business. If Poncinello gets hold of that cargo, he's won and I have lost. And you'll have your work cut out for you. If you want to get to Poncinello, you will need heavy-duty persuaders. I am just the man to get them for you. Change the ship back under my flag, maybe pop two in the traitor dime's head while you're at it. You'll get enough guns to start the apocalypse. You in or out? Let's get this show on the road. Vladimir was one of those old-time bad guys with honor and morals, which made him almost one of the good guys. None of us was a saint. The Brooklyn Riverfront was a maze of rusty containers, sharp bone cranes looming up from the snowstorm. On a night like this, you couldn't help but think of the dark army of dead men sleeping with the fishes, cement shoes in line. No minotaur lurked in this labyrinth, but somewhere out there, on the clanking deck of his cargo freighter, the skipper of the k was waiting, like the ferryman of the river Styx. Freighter. The skipper of the K-Ron was waiting, but the ferryman in the river sticks.
both of them beat to a pulp. I swollen. Until then, 